What's up travelers? In this video, we're going to be having a conversation about how to get through TSA as quickly and painless as possible. I got a lot of great information here, so you're not going to want to miss it, so stick around. My name's Anthony Harding. This is Tasting Travel. Welcome to the show. We are glad to have you here. We are currently sitting at 2,077 subscribers. We're on a mission to get to 5,000. So if this video brings any value to you go and you enjoy the video, go ahead and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell and come back for the next videos. Usually we are out in the field doing food reviews of amazing and interesting foods around the world. So you're not gonna wanna miss that either. Let's get on to this one. So like I said, in this video, we are talking about how to get through TSA as quickly and painless as possible. There are a few things that you can sign up for and get registered for that make things a lot easier. It costs a lot of money. I'll leave, I'll leave some links down in the description of where to find them. And those would be TSA PreCheck, Clear, and Global PreCheck. Those tend to be a hassle to get signed up for, but once you do get signed up for them, they are worth it. I personally have never gotten signed up for them because in order for me to get signed up for it, I think I'd have to drive about four hours to get to where I need to go to. I think it's kind of ridiculous that I have to go up by the border in order to do it. I should be able to do it next to an international airport like SeaTac. Unfortunately, for some reason, they don't have that option, so that kind of sucks. Other than that, that's not what this video is about, so if you want to deal with that, the links will be in the description so you can go check that out. So the first thing that we want to talk about is how to dress when you're getting ready to go to the airport so you can not have a hassle. First things first is you want to dress comfortably. You don't want to be dressing up to the nines and all of that kind of stuff. This isn't the 1950s anymore. There's no real need for that. However, sometimes if you do dress in like a suit and tie, you do increase your chances of the airline bumping you and upgrading you into a first class flight which is kind of nice. I've had that happen to me before. Back to dressing comfortably, that means like t-shirt, slacks, jeans, that fit well, but you definitely don't want anything that's controversial. Nothing with drugs on it, nothing with politics and, and anything offensive. Just stay away from it. You don't want to irritate any of these TSA officers because they might see you in the line, they might see that, that pot leaf on your shirt and be like, yeah, we're gonna check this guy. You don't want that. It's just a, a good idea to stay away from that kind of stuff. But make sure your pants don't have very many pockets because less pockets mean more places that need to be emptied out and searched and all that kind of stuff, so you don't wanna do that. Also, wear pants that fit well, so you don't need a belt. That way, when you get up to the bins, you, you don't have to take your belt off because you already don't have one and your pants aren't gonna fall down as you're going through the scanner. Again, no belt, the least amount of pockets as possible, and that's gonna make your life a lot easier. As far as your shoes go, you want to, you're gonna have to take them off when you get to the bins and then walk through the scanner. Uh, so don't wear anything that's difficult to take off, meaning like no boots, no high tops that are tied really tight. The number one thing is wear socks because you don't want to walk on those floors that have had millions of feet trampled across them over the last couple of weeks. It's just, yeah, it's kind of gross. It's probably a good way to get some athlete's foot or some other kind of foot fungus you don't want that. Wear a jacket with a lot of pocket room and zippers on the pockets. That way you can make your life a lot easier once you get up to the bins. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then also, don't wear your headphones until after security. Just leave them in your backpack or your carry-on. Just don't even worry about them you, you don't need the music while you're going through security that way you can hear what the tsa agents are saying and you don't piss them off <laughs> 
Now we're gonna talk about your carry-ons. First, we're gonna talk about your backpack. You wanna keep your laptop in your backpack and have easy access to it and make sure that it is charged up because if the TSA agents need to check your laptop, they are gonna need to turn it on. If it's not charged up, you're gonna have an issue and that is gonna suck and slow you down a lot. Also, make sure your backpack has a lot of pockets and a lot of space. Also make sure anything that you pack in it is neatly packed in it so you have easy access to everything in case the TSA agents need to get in and see something in your bag. I have found these awesome lockable S-clips on Amazon. I will tr see if I can find a link to them. I definitely, definitely recommend these things. A couple years ago, I was in Naples, Italy, and I got pickpocketed for my passport, my vaccination card, and because of that, I had to cut my, my trip short. I had to come back to the United States and get all of that stuff replaced, and it was all because my zippers on my backpack were not locked. That is definitely a lesson that I learned the hard way, and I don't recommend it. If you have a full-size carry-on, make sure when you pack that, make it well organized. If TSA needs to look through it after it's gone through the scanner, which does happen from time to time. You can go through it and it's easy to find whatever they're looking for and be on your way. Liquids. You can only carry bottles of liquid that carry up to 3.4 ounces. That is it. And you can have one quart size Ziploc bag and you can fill that up as full as you can get it with these bottles of 3.4 ounce liquids. Make sure you don't bring any full bottles of water or soda or anything like that. Keep in mind that things like peanut butter, applesauce, mashed potatoes, and anything with that kind of consistency is also considered a liquid. Yeah, I know it's stupid, but that's the rules. And yeah, it is what it is. If you have any of that kind of stuff, it has to go into that one quart size Ziploc bag. So I suggest you know, if you're gonna bring food, bring something else. If you are bringing food, keep it in clear containers so they are easily identifiable so anybody can look at it and be like, oh, okay, that's an apple or that's just a sandwich. It makes things a lot easier. If you are traveling with prescription meds, make sure they are clearly labeled, preferably in the bottles that they came in and they need to have your your name and the prescription and all of that kind of stuff on it so they know they can just pick the bottle up and be like okay this is what this is if you are traveling with any powdered goods it's best to check those so i say don't check bags because checking bags is expensive so don't take any powdered goods if you can not avoid it then keep a very 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 small amount and I would put that in your liquid bag as well now you have been packed you're dressed you're on your way to the airport you're getting ready to get in line to go through security when you're on your way there don't go shooting guns because one of the, one big thing that happens is you get gunpowder on your hands and when you are standing in line, there is a chance that you're going to get randomly swabbed and you don't want any explosive substances on your hands because that will cause you problems. So don't go shooting before you go to the airport. Probably even wait a couple of days after you go shooting if you're gonna if you're the type of person that likes to go shooting it's just a, a bad idea to risk having residue of that kind of stuff on your hands you get to the airport you're in you're in your the line to go through the tsa security check make sure you have your passport in your hand with your boarding pass what i do is i put my boarding pass right on the id page of my passport and then I open it when I hand it to the TSA agent. It makes things more streamlined and easier to get to the bins. Before you get to the bins, what I like to do is I like to take my wallet, my phone, which should also be charged uh, in case, again, like the laptop, if they need to see it, 
they want to make sure that it is an actual functioning phone. Cash, other small items like watches, uh, jewelry, any kind of that kind of stuff. It just, I like to put them in either in my jacket pockets which is why I suggest having zippers on your jacket pockets or a backpack and then you also need to take your shoes off and you can do all of this stuff before you get to the bins which makes it a whole lot easier so you are going to have to take one bin and put your shoes in your jacket your hat anything that kind of like that 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 just goes right in their own bin together. Uh, open your backpack and get your laptop out. Uh, I like to open my backpack a little bit before I get to the bins. That way, right when I get to the bins, I can pull out two bins, pull the laptop out, put it in a bin, put the backpack in a separate bin, um, and then also hold the bin with the laptop until it's going to be the last bin that goes through of your stuff. So that, so basically be your shoes and jacket in the first bin, your backpack in the second bin, and your laptop in the last bin. Keep your passport with you. You can go through the scanner with the passport and boarding pass in your hand. That is fine. They can see what it is and you don't risk it getting stolen on the other end, which is also the reason why you want to put your most valuable item that you're traveling with in your last bin. So it's the last thing to come out of the scanner when you get over to the other side. So you will more than likely be there when it comes out and you don't have to worry about TSA pirates taking your shit. So yeah, that's one way to be very safe when getting through TSA. That's the quickest and easiest way to get through TSA without paying more to be pre-approved to get through security quickly, which you're, even if you do do that, you're going to have to go through some amount of a security check anyway, but it is going to make your life a lot quicker and easier. Um, so yeah, that right there is a roadmap to getting through TSA quickly and easily and with the least amount of pain as possible. This is kind of not a normal type of video for, for my channel, but I just couldn't bring myself to get out and drive a couple hours or anything to go and review a restaurant nearby where I'm living this week. I just didn't have it in me. So I decided I've been thinking about making this video for a while anyway, so here it is. Hello, my name is Varun, a really cool guy in a boat. You can be really cool guy like Varun if you subscribe to Tasting Travel right now. If you do not subscribe, I'll be ah, ah. You're welcome. We are on our way to five thousand subscribers it's a goal we really want to get to so if you've enjoyed it please go ahead and subscribe to the channel come back every tuesday we drop a new video usually it is about the food um, but sometimes we're going to have this sometimes we're going to have a travel destination uh, it's a fun time so go ahead and subscribe hit the like button notification bell all that fun stuff and as always, eat great food.